。接下来登台演讲的是《连线》杂志创始主编、互联网思想家、失控必然作者凯文·凯利，掌声有请。Hello, Baidu Center. I'm Kevin Kelly, author of Out of Control, Senior Maverick at Wired Magazine, and I'm honored to be in Creator City. To share with you my thoughts about what is next, the next platform. It's going to be a mixed reality. We all know what virtual reality is: is artificial place. But this is a mixed one where we have the real world and artificial things mixed in with it, sometimes called MR. When you have virtual reality, you have a sense of being in a place. We call that immersion. You really feel like you're there. With mixed reality and the smart glasses, you have a sense of presence. That something is present in this world, and that's the chief attribute of this new platform: presence. I call it the mirror world. The other VR world is sort of like the metaverse. It's much more difficult to do the mirror world to get presence. But if you can do that, you can also do VR and the metaverse. But you can't do the opposite. So. The mirror world's bigger. It's a much bigger platform, and they're all very, very similar. Which is a wearable prism that you see that will see through the real world, and you have an overlay of digital material on top. We can use this for many things. We can be designing products and actually walking around them. We can be designing an architectural.、Um, Building that we could walk through, and but we see it in three-dimensional places, and we can feel that presence. We can use it as a means of learning. The idea is is that it's the real world plus the virtual world together, and that those two together make up this new platform. Not just the virtual, not just the real, but the real plus the virtual together. It gives us layers of information that we can. Um, use to guide us, to inform us, to entertain us, to in some ways、um, enhance our experience of the real world. The major task is to map the entire world. So this world will form a parallel mirror world of the real world. And you may ask, well, who's going to map this? And the answer is that we are going to map it. The users are going to map it. When you put the glasses on, in order for it to show you. That virtual layer, it has to map the real world, and each time you go back and look again, it's remapping it and updating it. So everybody using it together are going to be the creators of this world. It's basically a user-generated map, and even objects, big objects, structures, little objects, will have a digital twin. We'll have the mirror of them, which is a virtual version of them. And these will look very realistic. It's also a shared world, meaning if I see something here or if I make something here, other people will also see it. And it's also accessible by any device. While we ideally want to have smart glasses to see this, almost any kind of device that has a screen will be able to view it, including, of course, our initially our phones. And it's in real time. Things can be updated, can move in real time. We can interact with them in real time. Um, and it's kinetic, in the sense that just as like the simulations we now make for Hollywood movie special effects, where they actually have physics put into the simulation, so when something falls, it falls realistically, or it bounces realistically, or it, the fabric folds realistically. This world will also have that same kind of virtual physics and kinetics, meaning that it will be something that will look and behave and move. In a realistic manner, all places, everywhere, eventually will be part of this, and most importantly, this will include real people. So we will have avatars, and we will have ways to track our gestures and our movements and our gazes, where we're looking, our emotion on our faces, because the glasses will also have cameras that will point back to our own faces, backward-facing cameras. That will could that will recognize our our, our our expressions and then convey them in our avatar. This is going to be more important as a social media than WeChat is, 
because this is going to be where we're going to really interact with other people. It's going to be the most social of all the places that we've invented virtually. And of course, in order for this to work, it has to be a seamless cloud-based enterprise, meaning that it's not just going to take 5G, it's going to take 6G, 10G. It's going to require an immense amount of bandwidth to communicate in real time all these visual data that's being captured and manipulated and transmitted. It's a huge job. So the first version of the web digitized all the information there was. Took all the books and all the documents and all the databases and digitized them so you could apply algorithms to find and search for them and discover them and do stuff with them. The second version of the web, um, we digitize human relationships, human behavior, and the social graph. Well, now we're at the third version of the web, and that's where we're gonna digitize everything else, all the places and buildings and objects, and the entire world eventually. And that's a very, very big thing. And what that makes means is that the world itself becomes susceptible to have algorithmic search, to be to, to find and manipulate things like we did with information. Now we can do with places and objects. So this machine readable aspect of the mirror world is a central attribute that, and, 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 and the foundation of all the opportunities that come from that. So the entire world becomes machine readable. And by the way, this world is also the same world that robots and AI see. So the self-driving car that goes down the road, what it's seeing is it's seeing this world, the mirror world. The real world plus the virtual. You can see the real world, but it has the ability to see the virtual. So, some people call this new platform the spatial internet, the spatial 3D internet, because it's the internet's in three dimensions. Volumetric, spatial places, a sense of presence, an immersion, so it's the real world with a spatial overlay that allows us to apply algorithms and the things that we do with digital stuff, unbundling all to this new real world. That is the power. And there is no alternative world. There is no mirror world. There is no metaverse without AI, huge amounts of AI massive amounts of cheap, ubiquitous AI are necessary to make this world work. In order to see something, to scan it, to map it, to recognize it, to display it, requires an immense amount of AI. Without AI, there is no mirror world and there's no metaverse. So, AI is a crucial element of this. Making it cheaper, faster, quicker, more powerful is the engine that's gonna run this world. And, um, some of that AI is gonna run on the device, the smartphone, the smart glasses, but a lot of the AI is a cloud-based AI. So I think some of the gestures and things that have to be very, very quick will be maybe device-based, but the rendering, the, the, the world building, the, 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 the presence of, of buildings and all that will operate from AI on the cloud. I would say this is a 20-year project. We were just beginning that 20 years. The stuff I'm talking about, it's not gonna happen for another 20 years. And when it does begin to happen, I believe it will first be in workers and enterprises and businesses. And that's where we'll first see it. Where we'll be able to use it to train people, to guide them, to repair, to help them understand. The simulate, will, these devices will run as simulations, which will help us to manage them. We're going to need entire new kinds of mathematics in order to deal with the very, very large numbers and the compressions that are necessary in computer science to make this work. And we're going to need new chips, new bandwidth that we don't have, and we'll need new business models. So there are a million opportunities ahead of us, and you're not late. So thank you. 感